Let's say you spend your entire career or your entire professional studies going into the networking world. You focus on one particular segment like enterprise. That's what I did. I focused mostly on enterprise technologies as I've been growing through my career. Now, I did focus a lot on security too, but here's the thing. When you focus on those types of technologies or those types of design solutions, those types of things, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, especially when you get to the expert level, but then you jump into a different world like data center or service provider and you realize you're just getting started. This has been my experience as I've started jumping into the Juniper service provider world and I started learning about how MPLS really works and how you can engineer MPLS to do some very specific things. I came to find out that OSPF can actually operate within constraints that you give it. This is called constrained shortest path first, and it's very important when designing an MPLS traffic engineering network. It helps the RSVP protocol actually design and figure out the best path that it should take while still meeting SLAs. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the basics, just a very high level overview of what CSPF really does. Get ready because this is big and it's fun. Let's get going. <laughs> The thing about OSPF is that you don't always learn all of the details when it comes to OSPF when you're going through the enterprise track. I mean, think about the OSPF LSA types. You've got LSA type one, which is your router LSA. It's how it tells all of the other devices in the enterprise. You know, this is the links that I'm attached to. That's what the router LSA type does. You've got type two, which is the network LSA. This is how it tells all the devices that are on a broadcast segment. I'm the designated router, the backup designated router, and I control what goes on in this segment, right? You've got type three, which is your summary LSA, which is basically your inter area LSA. Four and five are the ASBR LSA and the external route LSA. Then you jump to seven and you learn about the NSSA external LSA. And that's kind of where the buck stops when it comes to enterprises, right? The service provider world is so radically different. It's so, so incredibly robust in how it has to meet SLAs and perform traffic engineering in order to service their customers that you learn pretty quickly that what you learned about OSPF in the enterprise world was certainly robust, but it's not all there is to OSPF. Take this for example, let's take a look at what's on my screen right here. Let's pretend this is a customer right here. And all of this is going to be a service provider network, the ISP. And over here is the customer's other site. The customer partners with the ISP, they become a customer of the ISP, and they say, we want 35 megabits of guaranteed bandwidth to get to our other site. ISP says, no problem, we got that covered. So they run an IGP like OSPF or ISIS throughout. And just by looking at this, all things equal here, you see these are all gigabit ethernet links. The ISP or the IGP, I should say, would say the quickest path here is boop, then boop, and then you're out the door and you're good to go. What happens though when the ISP partners with all these other businesses right here on this link and guarantees them massive amounts of bandwidth? Maybe they guarantee this person 500 megabits per second and this person 500 megabits per second and this person 100 megabits per second. All of a sudden we've got a constraint problem because the 35 megs per second that we guaranteed this customer, the IGP would want to send all of this traffic this way. And if all of this traffic is also trying to traverse this way, we've just choked out this gigabit worth of bandwidth on this particular link. And this is where MPLS, RSVP and CSPF take it up way, just to, just a huge notch. And this is where you learn that OSPF and other protocols can do way more than we were typically thinking that it could do. So what the enterprise does, what this ISP does is they start running NPLS and they define entry points and exit points for the network. So in this case, the ISP would say this device right here is going to be my ingress for the path that I want MPLS to take. And this little router here is going to be my egress for the path that I want the router to take. And now it has to calculate the best path from ingress to egress. 
The first thing it'll do is it'll use RSVP, which is how it helps MPLS determine what labels it should assign throughout the path. But beyond that, we can leverage something called CSPF, which is Constrained Shortest Path First. The idea with Constrained Shortest Path First is we can take all of this awesome stuff with OSPF, but throw in some extra LSAs to help us carry information. For instance, the Type 10 LSA, you'll see that as an opaque LSA. The Type 10 LSA can actually carry bandwidth reservation and utilization info in it. So as OSPF is propagating information throughout this particular network, it can see, wait a minute, we've already reserved so much bandwidth on this link, we need to find a different route to get from the ingress to the egress. So for our customer who needs 35 megabits of second of guaranteed bandwidth, we can leverage OSPF to carry bandwidth utilization info. And when it finds that the bandwidth is overutilized on this particular link, it can say, wait a minute, this is a constraint to how we calculate the shortest path first tree. So when it finds out that this path is too constrained or overutilized, it will then recalculate shortest path first finding a different method or a different path using something like the bandwidth. But beyond that, you can take it even further. You can seriously identify each link by name. You can say, this link is called gold, and this link is called gold, and this link is called silver. And you can tell it, don't use any links that use silver because we've already allocated the silver links to different customers. You can actually do those things like that. So OSPF can carry constraint information which it can then hand to RSVP so that RSVP can calculate a better label switched path for MPLS to use to get from one end to the other. Thinking about things like bandwidth constraints or SLAs, or it can actually measure things like delay. You can actually measure those types of things too using constrained shortest path first. So this is something that I've been learning through my service provider journey, and it kind of blew my mind. There's this whole other world to this protocol that I thought I had mastered, and I wanted to share that information with you. That's been a very quick introduction to CSPF. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.